Hey everybody and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Vincent Name here and today we'll be taking a look at just taking our material functions and then we'll be adding normal maps and all that cool maps uh, while we just keep our main material uh, pretty neatly sorted. We'll be using material attributes which just sums up and just overall improves the look of our graph so it's just easier to understand. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So last time I left off, we actually went ahead and we actually added um, textures to our landscape. Uh, but we only have a base color texture for all our landscapes, uh, which is not really good or all our layers. It's, it's not really great. Uh, what we want to do is we want to add normal maps and other maps which you might want to add. And for us to do that, we're gonna go ahead and start off with our material function landscape base layer. And we have a base layer diffuse texture. What we want to do is we want to make something else than a diffuse, diffuse texture. We want to go ahead and I'll just close this down and save this. Um, and what I want to do is I'll just go ahead and open it up because I want to open my content browser while I'm working with this. What I want to do is I'll go to Mega Scans, Surfaces, um, starting off with Forest Floor. And what I want to do is I want to take the T Forest Floor normal map. And I'll just drag this in. It's going to be a texture sample. So I'm going to go ahead, right click and convert it to a parameter. And we're just going to go ahead and rename this parameter to Base Layer Diffuse. Not diffuse, it's a normal texture. And there we have our normal texture. Now I also want to go ahead and plug in the landscape layer codes into the diffuse section so that the um, in the normal section because we want the normal texture to, um, of course, scale with the diffuse texture. Now you might notice a problem here. Um, this isn't going to be too clean because if we actually go to our M landscape, now we're going to have to require multiple outputs for our material, which isn't really good. But don't worry, don't stress, we can use material attributes. Now, um, you might not know what material attributes is, but if I right click and type in material attributes, you're going to see that there's a make material attributes. So you could go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and make a new material attribute. What this will do is practically it will go ahead and make a material attribute. Um, uh, what a material attribute is, is it's practically an array of multiple stuff. It's an array of the base color, metallic, specular, roughness, and practically this just allows us to instead of having multiple results nodes, we can just go ahead and just make one material attribute and then at the end of our landscape layer, we can go ahead and just break it off at the end. So we have less clutter here and just a bit more clutter here. Uh, so you might not understand much with what I just described, but you'll see when we get into it. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and plug the base layer diffuse texture into the base color. Um, take the base norm layer normal texture, plug it into the normal texture. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and plug the material attributes into the output result. And while we're here, I'm also going to try something. Uh, set material attributes. Okay, so now that we have this set up, uh, we're gonna have a problem in our main graph. It's gonna say we can't mix all of these, and that's true, we can't mix all of these. So we'll just go ahead and hold Alt and click both of these off so that we have that going. And what we want to do is we want to do the same for our landscape layer 1 and 2. Just gonna go ahead and also it doesn't want to open the content browser, so I'm just going to go ahead and reopen that uh, landscape layer. 
So that's simply I want. And then, yeah, now my content browser works again. I'm gonna go to Mega Scans, Surfaces, take my Wild Grass, and drag out the normal texture. Want to do the same thing? We will be right click and convert to a parameter. This is called layer 1 normal texture. Awesome. And now we can just go ahead and plug in our landscape chords into the UV section. And then we can also go ahead and make material attributes. Of course, diffuse in base color. Normal in normal. Now we can go ahead and plug that out as the result. Now we can just go ahead and just take this. No, we don't have to. We can go ahead and save and apply that. And now we can go to landscape layer 2. I'm just gonna, for safety, close that down and uh, open it up again to make sure that I do get the content browser in the material. So I'm just gonna go ahead, go to my mega scans. Don't want to open surfaces, around the sedimentary rock, and drag in, not the diffuse, the normal texture. Just going to go ahead, right click, and convert to parameter. Of course, this will be layer to normal texture. I can go ahead, just not plug in into the RGB, we want to go ahead and plug in the landscape layer into the UV so that it scales up. And then we also want to go ahead and do the make material attributes again. Just plug in the diffuse and the base color, and of course the normal into the normal, and just output that. Awesome, now we could go ahead and save and apply that. And now when we go to our landscape, we can actually go ahead and plug in the results together without any error. But now we have an error in front, which the computer is not letting us know about, uh, but it's a pretty big error. And the problem is, is now we're trying to input an entire material into a base color, which is not really a good idea. So what we want to do is we want to drag off the layer blend and break material attributes. And we can go ahead, plug in the base color into the base color, and plug in the normal, not the entire break until we can go ahead, plug in the normal into the normal. And we just go ahead, and like I said, still might not be obvious what we've done, but what we've done is we've practically condensed an entire material down into a single pin, which just goes into our landscape material, it blends based on that, and then we can just go at the end of the blend and just break it out and input it in our M landscape, which is super cool. Um, and of course, now I can go ahead and save. I'm just gonna go here and wait for that. Now that's done compiling, um, we should see that well, everything looks pretty normal now at least. And we actually have our normal textures applied. And of course we still want to add our roughness textures. And we'll also see when we go into our... Okay, we still have a problem here, which we're gonna go ahead and solve. Um, when we created these base layer normal textures, we created all these uh, normal textures, we didn't group them. Just want to click this drop down on each of these material functions and just make sure you choose the one applicable to each of them. So let's click on the normal texture and click on layer one because we're in layer one and then a layer two, just do layer two. And while we're here, we also need to change all the sampler sources to shared wrap. Go ahead and save that. This should be shared wrap. Use from texture shared wrap. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the base one. Shared wrap. Save and apply. And let's go to our new map. It's just gonna go ahead and do the standard uh, compiling. Uh, but let's just go ahead and save our M landscape material. 
Now that that's done being saved, we can go to our landscape instance, and now we'll see there's the base layer where we can adjust the normal and the diffuse. Uh, layers 1 diffuse and normal, layer 2 diffuses and normals, which is really cool. And yeah, this is our landscape set up pretty well. We can see uh, that the normals are doing their thing in a certain way, and that's really cool. Uh, but we still have one problem. Um, we still want to add uh, the roughness maps. Well, you don't actually have to add a roughness map. It's your choice if you want to. Uh, if you ever wanted to add a roughness map, it's pretty simple. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and just close all these layers to make sure uh, that if we work in them, they will actually just go ahead and open the uh, content browser inside of them. So we're gonna go to the base layer and we're gonna go ahead and open the content browser. Now with Unreal, oh, not Unreal Engine, with Megascan's assets, if we go to Megascan surfaces and we go to where we're currently in the base layer, so we're gonna go to forest floor, they actually have this weird ORDP texture. If I click this, you'll, you're gonna drag this in, it's gonna look kind of weird, it's not gonna look like a normal uh, texture. Uh, but that's because each um, of these, actually, all of these colors, each have a certain channel has certain important information. Like, uh, for example, the blue channel has a displacement, the green channel has a roughness, and of course... The red channel will be ambient occlusion. Uh, we don't care about ambient occlusion for now. We're just going to go ahead and drag in the roughness into the roughness. We can go ahead and convert to a parameter. This will be our base layer. Uh, not normal. This will be our ORDP texture. Now this is um, only applicable if you're using Megascans assets, of, clo of course you'll be making multiple parameters based for uh, what texture you'll be using. Maybe you have a different roughness texture, maybe a different displacement one, uh, but they're all different and of course uh, you can just make multiple parameters. But we're just going to go ahead and plug in the UV, click on the param, make sure the sampler source is share the wrap and make sure the group is base layer because we're working in the base layer. And now we can just go ahead and do that for each of these landscape layer one. We're just gonna go ahead and go to our surfaces. This is our grass. We're gonna go ahead, drag in the ORDP. Gonna go ahead, right click, convert to parameter. This is layer one uh, ORDP texture and we can go ahead plug in the RGB into not the RGB we don't want the RGB key remember the second channel which is the uh, green channel is the roughness so we want to plug in the green into roughness and then we want to go ahead and we just want to plug in the landscape coordinate and then of course we want to make sure that the group is layer one and our sampler source is shared wrap to save on those texture samplers which we really care about so we want to go ahead save and apply and then we're gonna go ahead and open up layer two which uh, it's kind of self-explanatory what we have to do at this point uh, but we're just gonna go ahead and i'll show you one more time uh eroded in and terry rock we're just gonna go ahead drag the ordp uh, RDP app. Uh, texture in. We're gonna go ahead, right click, convert to parameter. This is gonna be called layer 2 ORDP texture. And then we also want to plug in the green into the roughness because second channel is roughness. We wanna plug in the landscape chords vector 2 into the UV. Want to click on it, make sure the group is the same layer that the material function is, and the sampler source is shared wrap. And yeah, this is already set up for all of these. We just want to go ahead 
and in the roughness, instead of having a defined value, we just want to go ahead and drag the roughness into the roughness from the material attributes. I can go ahead, save and apply. And I was just going to do some shader compiling when we go to our landscape, but yeah. And here we have our landscape material generally set up with some materials that should be more reflective or more reflective and some that shouldn't be isn't. And yeah, this is looking really good so far. Uh, but like I said uh, in the last episode, if you actually scroll out, we'll see that our landscape is texturing pretty badly. And that's something we have to fix. In the next part, we'll be using something called macro variation. Now, what is macro variation? Well, macro variation is just practically doing small changes to the textures, like making certain parts darker and stuff like that, just blending certain textures in with distance, stuff to help break up uh, texture tiling. So it's just small changes, but they really add a lot to our landscape. And of course, that will be a next part, but for now, we have our entire landscape and landscape material set up in a pretty decent way where you can add as many parameters if you want. Within reason, you just go ahead, create a sample source, make sure it's shared wrap, and make sure that you're in the right group so that when we go and I go to my content browser and go to my content, and in my landscape instance, we'll see I can change all of these to whatever I want at any time. So that's really cool. That's just an important thing to note. That's why we're doing all these parameters. This means that if you ever wanted to make another landscape that maybe has a different uh, color set, like maybe different textures for each layer, all you really have to do is just click on M landscape, create a material instance and change the textures there. It doesn't affect the main graph, and it only affects this, uh, which is important. If we go to our landscape, we just want to go ahead and click on the landscape material. And instead of M landscape material, we want to use the landscape instance. So we're just going to go ahead and save this. It's going to be a bit blocky. That's something Unreal Engine landscape does when it starts loading and unloading and stuff like that. Uh, but now it's fixed again. And now, any changes I make in this instance will only affect this landscape because it's not using the main landscape, it's using the instance. And what's awesome about the instance is any changes you make here um, does not require a shader compilation. So you can actually adjust everything on the fly and you don't have to wait for shader compiling. So that's really cool. And that's it for this part. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit like if you like the video. Hit dislike if you don't. If you hit dislike, please tell me why I should improve. I really want to get better at the general stuff of landscapes and Unreal Engine and everything you can learn me, uh, I can use in future endeavors. Uh, so, thanks for watching, guys, and good night.